craves this, sir? Mine, sir. Oh, a pit of clay for to be made for such a gift is made. Up. I think we died indeed, for thou highest in it. Uh, you lie out on, sir, and therefore it is not yours. Now, for my part, I do not lie in it, and yet it is mine. Thou dost lie in it to say to be in it, and say tis thine, tis for the dead, not for the quick. Therefore, thou liest. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, tis a quick lie, sir. Twill away again from me to you. <laughs> what man dost thou dig for? Uh, for no man, sir. What woman, then? For none, neither. Who must be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir, but rest the soul, she's dead. <gasps> How absolute the name is. We must speak by the card, or equivocation shall undo us. How long hast thou been a grave maker, sir? Of all the days of the year, I came to it that day that our last King Ammon overcame Fortin Gross. And how long is that since? But cannot you tell that? Every fool can tell that. It was the very day that young Hamlet was born. He that was mad and sent it to England. Aye, Mary, why was he sent into England? <laughs> Why? Because he was mad. <laughs> he shall recover his wits dead. Or oh, if he do not, it's no great matter dead. Why? <laughs> Twill not be seen in him. Dead to men are as mad as he. <laughs> <laughs> How came he mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? Faith, Ian, it lives in his wits. Upon what ground? Why, Ian, in Denmark. <laughs> I have been sexting in man and boy thirty years. <laughs> How long will a man lie in the earth ere he rot? Now, faith if he be not rotten before he die, as we have many poppy courses nowadays that will scarce hold the laying in, uh, he will last you some eight or nine years. A tanner, a tanner will last you nine years. Why he more than another? Why, sir, his heart be so tame with his truck, that he will hold out water a great while. Water is a sort of care of your horse and dead bun. Here's a skull now. This skull is lain in the earth three and twenty years. Whose was it? <laughs> a horse and mad fellows it was. Whose do you think it was? Nay, I know not. <laughs> a pestilence on him for a petty rogue. He put a flag and a rainish on my head once. This same skull, sir. This same skull so was your ex skull, the king's jest. This? Let me see. Alas, <laughs> poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, a most excellent fancy, why he hath borne me on my back a thousand times. How abhorrent my imagination is, my gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now? Your gambols, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set a table on a roar, knowing now to mock your own jeering, quite shock-fallen. <laughs> Oh, now, get you to your lady's chamber and let her paint an inch thick. To this she must come. Make her laugh at that. I prithee, Horatio, tell me one thing. What is it, my lord? Dost thou think Alexander looked all this fashion in the grave? Even so. And smelt so. <laughs> Even so, my lord. What base uses we return, Horatio? Why may not imagination trace the noble dust of Alexander till he find it stopping a beer barrel? Oh, Twere to consider too curiously to consider so. No, faith, not a job but to follow thither and with modesty enough as this. Alexander died. Alexander was buried. 
Alexander returneth into dust. The dust is earth, of earth we make loam, and of that loam whereto he was converted, might they not stop a beer barrel? Imperial Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that the earth, which was once to kept the world in awe, might patch a wall to expel the winter's fall.